Okay, welcome back. This is theCUBE. We're live here in Silicon Valley in San Jose Convention Center, heart of Silicon Valley. This is Hadoop Summit. We're here live for two days. This is theCUBE. theCUBE is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's exclusive coverage of Hadoop Summit. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at wikibon.org. Tomer Shiran is here. He is the Vice President of Product Management at MapR. MapR is a company that has been going hard after this big data and Hadoop business for quite some time now, adding innovations, making Hadoop enterprise ready is really what MapR is all about. Tomer, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So give us the update. Um, you guys, as I said, you, uh, you kind of just don't get involved in all the urinary Olympics, I like to call it. You just sort <laughs> of focus on the, the customers, you dive right in, trying to solve problems. Uh, give us the update on, on MapR, you know, M7, which is your platform. How are things going? Yeah, I mean things are things are going great out in the out in the field. A lot of new customers. Um, you know the things we do at MapR is we we make Hadoop enterprise grade. We we bring customers all the innovation that that happens in the open source community. We combine that with our own innovation to to make the platform more enterprise grade. And we provide a, a significant architectural advantages. If you look at things like uh, being POSIX compliant and and offering full random read write access so customers can just mount the cluster that like they like they would mount a giant NAS and, NFS, and integrate all their right? standard tools. Yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of things there for the up customers. Front on that one, right? Yeah, I mean it's 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 all about the the underlying architecture that enables you to do those things. It's a, it's not something you can add kind of as an incremental incremental patch to to, to the existing systems. Maybe add some color to that, if, if you would. Talk about the underlying architecture. You're, 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 I'm inferring from what you said that there's, a, there's an architectural flexibility, it allows you to add features in a way that, that are not bolt-ons. Um, I'm inferring a lot from that statement, but I wonder if you could just double click on that a little bit and, and, and share with our audience what you mean by that. Sure, you know, we've, we've uh, you know, talking to, to many, many companies that use Hadoop, and, and a lot of the largest enterprises now use MapR as a distribution. Um, what what we found is there there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of limitations uh, with kind of the the other other Hadoop distributions in terms of uh, uh, for example only being able to append to files uh, essentially HDFS being a a read only file system and so MapR has really come up and, and solved those problems by providing the ability to to do random reads and writes and the ability to expose an, a standard storage interface uh, so it's very easy to use the platform. Um, you know, and those kinds of innovations, like having an NFS interface, are only possible when you have the underlying random read-write capability that we've built, and that's not something that can be just you know bolted onto HDFS. Um, you know, the same things apply for uh, all the enterprise-grade business continuity. If you look at things like uh, high availability, not having a name node, or snapshots for point-in-time recovery with with full consistency, or disaster recovery across data centers, um, those are all features that are that are unique to MapR, and they're enabled by by the the advanced architecture. Tomer, I got to ask you, obviously MapR M7, big news here. Also, the joint testing with Fusion IO, company we've been covering since they've been private, um, now public, uh, pioneering the uh, flash SSD space for, you know, on server side, among other things, just really changing the game on IO and then these, you know, we call up, uh, you know, uh, software-led infrastructure, software-defined infrastructure. Um, what have you guys found? Because obviously writes and reads is a big debate. You know, get these, these data lakes out there being talked about. Um, HBase makes a great, is a great opportunity to take advantage of those data lakes. What did you guys do uh, in M7 and with Fusion? What have you guys tested? Could you share with the folks just a, some color behind the Fusion relationship and, and that announcement? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, MapR's M7 edition is all about bringing together uh, the, the types of different types of the Hadoop workloads as well as the NoSQL workloads uh, with the ability to run HBase applications uh, in a production environment. So M7 is all about enterprise grade HBase uh, in addition to Hadoop and having that one platform. Um, from a performance standpoint, you know, we've solved all the inefficiencies that, that otherwise uh, exist in the software layer, and with, with M7, it's really all about driving, uh, you know, we, we're, we're, we're really able to drive the, the hardware at its, at its raw, raw speed. So if you look at technologies like SSDs and specifically uh, Fusion I.O., uh, that brings to the table you know, additional performance uh, uh, improvements at the hardware layer that MapR can uniquely take advantage of. Um, if you look at other Hadoop distributions, they're bottlenecked in the software, and, and you know, I've seen blog posts talking about how Hadoop can't benefit from SSD. I think we heard that today, it won't benefit from SSDs in the next, uh, next three years. And, and really, that, that's because you know, there's inefficiencies at the software layer uh, that needed to be addressed, and MapR's addressed those. Um, and I think the other point there is, um, 
you know, you, most customers, they don't want to run the entire cluster just with SSDs, and so MapR gives them the ability to, to, to provide tiered storage where they can do some workloads, for example, the HBase type workloads on SSD and other workloads uh, on the spinning disks. It's funny, we've been, you know, it's, it's funny and, and to, to watch, and interesting to watch, not so much funny, but it's just funny to watch the, the early criticisms of MapR and the, when you guys were, were founded and launched. Oh, well, they're non-standard, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you, you got, you're smiling, you know what I'm talking about. But now, everyone's catching up to you guys with this enterprise grade messaging. So I really want to ask you, you guys have stayed true to your mission on the enterprise side, really building, using open source, building a product for the enterprise. Um, so just comment anecdotally if you can, just on, on everyone else kind of catching up, because Merv said it's like, it's the bike race where everyone kind of catches up to someone else. Or have they caught up? Are you extending your lead? And what have you found in the enterprise that, that's going to keep you ahead of the pack in terms of being yeah. differentiated on that enterprise grade. Yeah, so you know, cer <laughs> certainly the map. Take your choice. The, the <laughs> there's a lot of questions there, but the uh, the map our message around being enterprise grade and the features and the capabilities we've delivered to to accomplish that. Um, you know, we see our competitors talking about you know wanting to be enterprise grade or, or providing features that that may sound similar to map R. So you know, to give you an example, uh, you know, some of our competitors talk about H-based snapshots. Well, the you know snapshots are all about point in time. Uh, recovery, well, HBase snapshots don't have any consistency in them, so you know they're not snapshots. Uh, you know, and if you read the Jira's, they talk about maybe we should rename these fuzzy snapshots so that we don't confuse the customers, and you know, why, why don't we I mean, just let's leave the name and we'll document it and things like that. So, you know, I think it's great validation for our, our approach to the market, for our strategy that you know everyone talks about enterprise grade, and, and uh, you know our competitors want to uh, you know have their features called similar to MapR's. Uh, but there's no silver bullet though in the enterprise. I mean, it's clearly just not a one size fits all marketplace. I mean, you, do you agree with that statement? Do you, do you see it differently? I mean, there's no one Hadoop, it's a lot of different solutions depending upon the use cases, right? Well, or I, I, how do you see that? Well, I, I think Hadoop in itself and, and specifically a lot of the things we've done are, are about enabling more and more use cases to run on, on the platform. Um, you know, one of, one of the things that uh, sometimes people don't, don't realize is that with MapR you get the benefit, all, all the advantages of the open source and the open source community and any new open source projects that happen or, or that come up are, are integrated into the MapR platform and, and our customers enjoy you know, our 24-7 support on those. And then we combine that with our own innovation so the customer gets the benefit of, of both worlds. So talk uh, about that a little bit. So let's talk about that in the context of Yarn. Mm -hmm. So um, how does that statement apply to something like Yarn? Take us through sort of a practical Absolutely. rollout from a product standpoint. Yeah, so you know there's, there's uh, you know, I think one of the presentations this morning talked about Hadoop being not one project, but many projects. Uh, and so Yarn being one of the, one of the projects in the, uh, in the Hadoop uh, ecosystem. Uh, we at MapR, we're really excited about Yarn. Uh, we'll, we'll have a GA release with Yarn later this year. Um, Yarn is all about expanding and, and you know the use cases for Hadoop and enabling interactive queries as well as batch as uh, you know and, and uh, streaming and and so forth on on the single platform and by bringing that innovation that that's happening in the open source community uh, to our customers to 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 map our users you know they can take advantage of that you know and for example things uh, projects like Apache Drill which are about in, uh, you know interactive SQL queries you know those are are baked into into yarn those are those run within the yarn context uh, and they're part of that and i think what you'll see going forward is that yarn will enable um, new types of uh, uh, of workloads running within hadoop and by having that unique underlying platform that mapr has which allows any application to access the data not just applications that were designed for hadoop all of a sudden you'll, you'll see things that can run in Yarn like, like MPI, uh, which will only be able to access, access the data when they're running on a MapR distribution. Okay, so classic example of you guys adding value to an open source component. Um, all right, so what's next for you guys? What's, uh, <laughs> what's the roadmap look like? Give us some hints. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you look at the MapR, uh, you know, we traditionally haven't talked that much about our, our futures. You know, we, you know, we haven't set up conferences and talked about futures of Hadoop, futures of Hadoop, term, futures you know, of what Hadoop. Kinds so of gaps are you guys going to fill? Right. You know, the our, our vision for Hadoop is is the one platform for big data. As these clusters grow bigger and bigger, and MapR now has you know customers that run over 1,000 servers in, in a cluster. You know, the, the that's where the data lives, and it, it's not really possible anymore to kind of move the data around to different other systems for for different types of access to that data. And so it's all about expanding the use cases and types of access you can have to that platform and then continuing to provide more and more enterprise grade capabilities uh, so that customers are, are uh, enterprises uh, are comfortable using this in the most mission critical environments. 
Tomer, thanks for coming on theCUBE, Vice President of Product Management at MapR, obviously one of the big pioneers here in the, in the well, they were, we call them, we part of the big three, uh, Hadoop, Cloudera, Horton, versus MapR, um, you guys have been there from the beginning, congratulations, uh, great company, uh, we've been following your progress, big fan. Again, we think this model's going to evolve faster and faster and faster, uh, this is theCUBE, this is Hadoop Summit, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>